Hey guys, so let's take apart a Max 360, shall we? Uh, this is Escort's new detector. Uh, it has arrows. This one just came out and I uh, just took it apart to get a feel for what's inside. Uh, this one actually is more complicated than what I saw with the other uh, kind of M5 based detectors, the Max and the GT7. Uh, there is a little bit more going on under the hood here. There's more bits of plastic, there's more screws, there's more hardware. So uh, it's going to take us a little bit longer to go through everything here, but uh, there's definitely some interesting stuff going on underneath. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take it apart. What we've got as far as the design, you can see um, we've got power plugs, we've got our antenna right there, nothing on this side, display there, top, which you guys saw already. And our access point, our point of entry is going to be right here on the bottom. There are these four screws you can see. One, two, three, four. Uh, in order to open up the detector, we're going to need two things. We're going to need our torque screw, size T8, and then we're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, this one's a little bit easier to get into. We don't need a piece of plastic to pry like we did with some of the other detectors. Uh, it's all uh, screwdriver work here. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right in and open this bad boy up. All right, cool. So we've got uh, the four screws removed. Now what we're gonna wanna go ahead and do is take off this bottom panel here. Uh, there are two pieces of plastic that go down right in here and they go into the body there. There's also uh, a couple places where it kind of stays together there. I found one of the easiest places to open it is to separate it from right here near the display. We just kind of reach in there. Uh, again, now that I've done it before, it is a little bit easier. It was tougher the first time. That seems to be the trend here, but Go ahead and lift this up, and here is what we've got. We've got these two pieces of plastic that I mentioned that went uh, on either side right there. Take our four screws, we'll set them aside, and here is a look at uh, the bottom of the underside of the unit. Uh, you can see we've got a couple chips here. We have uh, a raised little board right there. Uh, here's our speaker. It's actually connected right here to the board, and we have uh, two ribbon cables. This is going to be for the display right here. And then this other ribbon cable is going to be to control the lights for the, uh, the arrows. So uh, now what we want to go ahead and do is start taking off the uh, pieces of trim and plastic here to get inside the detector. Uh, what I found the next thing we want to do is we're going to pull off this piece of plastic right here. So we'll go ahead and just start pulling it sideways a little bit. It always seems so much easier the second time when I've already done it. So you can see, uh, went ahead and pulled off this piece of plastic. Looks like this. Uh, what I've noticed, um, when you look at the detector all put together, um, there is this kind of uh, big bulge right there, this blob, this big lump. It looks like it is purely cosmetic. There's nothing there under the hood. You can see it's just uh, like this, just a piece of plastic. There's really nothing there. There's no circuitry or electronics or anything. Uh, the mute button is actually separate. You can see from everything else. And our uh, mute is right down here. Oh, there it is. Looks like that must be the mute, the mute button. Yep. Okay. So that's where the mute button is located. And then the uh, display for the arrows actually slides out like this. So there we go. Slides in and slides out. On the back, it's got uh, some clear plastic right there that you can see. Uh, for the arrows, and if we take a look here, there are the uh, basically the ribbon cable and all the little different wires to light up, control, and power the LEDs. So as you can see, we've got the four LEDs right there for our arrows. Cool. So that's the inside of the arrows. Uh, if we take a look, have we gotten to it yet? Yep. You'll see right here, there's actually the horn. Inside there, you can actually see, that's the horn. You can see the top ridge right there for the uh, rear horn. And that's why with uh, the Max 360, there's kind of this, uh, this bulge right here. That bulge there is going to be very similar to the condenser lens. You can see right there, this kind of round convex lens. Uh, if we take a look here on the front of the Max 360, the reason that they have this round convex lens right there is for the same reason. It helps focus the energy um, down into the uh, antenna here. So that's why, interestingly enough, that uh, has that. So cool. Uh, let's go ahead and keep going. Next, what we want to do is uh, take off this piece of plastic that comes around. So we'll start working it off here. Always want to be really careful, you know, figure out the best way to do it. I believe uh, it pops off on the sides. There we go. There we go. 
Okay, cool. So it's kind of this uh, C-shaped piece of plastic like this. Flip this over. You can see it's got uh, these three things right here, which kind of just stick into the side when we pop it out. Also, it's kind of uh, aligned with these other pieces right here. So in this case, the lens is actually connected to this uh, C-shaped piece of plastic as opposed to being a separate piece of plastic that pops out on its own. Uh, I probably could pull off the lens separately, but I don't really care to do that, so I'll just leave it attached. Be easier for later. Okay, cool. And uh, let's see, what have we got next? Ah, okay, so this is going to go ahead and start to come out. And, ah, uh, yes. Okay, so we can go ahead and separate. We'll let gravity do some of the work here. The top panel. Uh, so there we go, the top panel pops right off. Uh, you can see in this case we have these four um, pieces of plastic here, these kind of uh, prongs. And we also have the one for the, uh, the rear laser sensor right there. Basically, just like before, uh, actually this is, yeah, that's for the rear laser. Um, goes down there and then inserts down into here, right there, which is the uh, laser sensor inside the MAX360. So just like before. Uh, if we take a look, we'll see our buttons, the way our buttons are laid out. We've got, uh, what is this, mark. Here's volume down, volume up, brightness, sensitivity, power, and volume, which is over there. That's how our buttons are going to operate. Uh, you'll notice, actually, interestingly enough, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in the review, but you'll notice mark is right here and mute is down here. As opposed to if you look at like a uh, the previous generation Max's, uh, this instead of mark was mute. So mute was in the center, and um, let's see, what is it now? Mark was over here in this button. So they've kind of redone the... Uh, the arrangement of the buttons a little bit, but uh, fun little aside. So anyways, uh, that is the inside of the case. We've got, you know, a couple buttons you can see that we can press. Cool. Let's go ahead and set uh, the case aside. Alrighty. So uh, next what we were going to do is uh, remove the display and the LEDs here for the, uh, the rear antenna. To do that, we've got uh, four clips. One, two, three, Four, and we can also go ahead and disconnect the ribbon cables for the uh, LEDs for the for the arrows, as well as for the OLED display. Uh, the trick to doing that is basically you've got these little pieces of plastic right here, these black ones, and we're just going to lift it up like this. Just kind of push on it just a little bit. We'll do the other one. There you go, and then that will release these ribbon cables so that we can pop them out. Alrighty, there we go. So now we've disconnected the displays, and we're going to go ahead and want to uh, remove the plastic here for uh, the displays. So to do that, just kind of carefully go one by one, just kind of lift and pull a little bit. Lift and pull. Do the same thing here. Kind of. Whoop, I popped that one back on. <laughs> okay. Lift and pull. There we go. Just make sure they're all removed, and then it should be able to just slide right off. There we go. Nice and slowly and carefully. Cool. Now nope, that one right back in again. Wow. They really want to grab on there, don't they? That's funny. Okay, cool. So we have removed the uh, display. And that looks like this. So there we go. Uh, now we're looking at the uh, Basically the main part that you would see, we've got our display, you can see it's open there, and there is going to be our smaller rear antenna. If we take a look at the main side, we've got our front antenna right there, and you can see we've got a single ridge here. I keep pointing it out because some of the other detectors, like the V1, for example, actually have a double ridge antenna. It's a different design, so just kind of getting familiar with you know how the escorts operate. Uh, we've got our laser sensor right here, our primary. Uh, again, we've got uh, audio for headphones or external Bluetooth speaker, if you like plug it in there, uh, external speaker, we've got power cable, USB, cool, okay. So, kind of taking a look here at the basics, let's go ahead and start uh, opening it. Again, we've got our PCB sandwich here, and uh, to go ahead and start opening this up, there's going to be uh, some more screws that are involved. Instead of just pulling them apart, uh, in this case, the sandwich is actually screwed together. And to remove that, uh, you can see we've got some torque screws here. So we're going to grab our torque screwdriver, we've got one, two, three. So let's go ahead and remove those three screws. Just double check, is that right? Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, okay, cool. So we're going to remove these three here and that will allow us to lift this top PCB off. So let's do that. Cool, okay. 
So we've got the, uh, this PCB removed, and then there's going to be one electrical connection between the two PCBs. And you can see those kind of uh, those pins right there. That's the point where they're all connected. So we're carefully going to want to spread them, make sure we don't bend anything. Do it very slowly and carefully. Pull them apart. There we go. Awesome. Now we have separated the two. You can see there is the connector right here. Uh, we've got, I don't know the official name for this thing, but kind of like a bridge sort of thing. It just connects pins from there to over here and uh, connects them both sides. So, okay, cool. So we've got our second PCB here. Very nice. There's all the good stuff. Uh, again, all the detailed high-res pictures I'll be posting on RDF. You can check the link in the video description to see uh, more information, discussion, high-res photos, all that good stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look next. We'll set these screws aside. Okay, so take a look at this. We have two antennas, and this is exactly what we would expect, right? We've got our uh, primary antenna pointing forwards, and then we have this antenna, which is our rear antenna. Flip it over this way for the camera, make a little bit more sense, presumably. So main antenna, rear antenna. You can see the rear is definitely smaller and not as big, so this is going to be your primary one. Uh, to go ahead and remove this antenna, uh, the horn basically, we are going to want to unscrew it yet again. So, whoops. Uh, in this case, we're going to want to remove one, two, three, four. So, four torque screws, and that's going to allow us to uh, remove this whole assembly here with the horn. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so we've got that removed, and uh, last time, if you guys remember, when I lifted this up, the metal horn just fell right off. In this case, it's actually a little bit different. Check this out. We're actually going to need to separate the horn, the entire assembly, from the PCB. And the reason is that there's actually a connection right here. You'll see there's another printed circuit board right here underneath the horn itself, separate from the primary PCB, interestingly enough. So, uh, again, there is a little bit more going on here. So, to get to the inside of the horn itself, we've got uh, another 12 screws to remove. One, two, do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're going to need to do that, and then we'll be able to separate this circuit board from the horn itself. So uh, taking a look here before we do that, and we set this board aside, we've got big chip there. Have to look up exactly what that is for. Not entirely sure, but Google, I'm sure, can tell us. So we've got that, and then in this one, interestingly enough, the uh, it's kind of convenient. The speaker is actually attached, attached directly to the board here, so I don't have to worry about unplugging it like I did before. So that's kind of nice for me. I'm guessing it's just a type of glue or, oh, there we go. There's uh, these things here. If we wanted, we could just remove, squeeze, pinch, push it through, and that's how we would uh, remove the speaker if we wanted to. So cool. Okay. Set that aside, and now let's go ahead and get to the, uh, the real guts behind it. Let's take a look at the RF circuitry. So, to do this, we're going to want to remove this circuit board here underneath the horn. And let's do it. Okay, awesome. So, we've got those screws removed. There's quite a few of them. And let's go ahead and open it up. Let's take this circuit board off, and there we go. There is a look at uh, all the RF circuitry here for the MAX360. As you can see, we've got uh, two horns here. There's the rear, there's the front, of course. Uh, they would both connect right up here. It looks like we don't have an LNA attached. There's not one right there. Uh, what else have we got? This all looks very similar from uh, the M5 base detectors, the MAX and the GT7. Uh, we've got more stuff, looks similar. There's all the rear antenna stuff coming in. So. Uh, I wish I understood the stuff better so I could actually, you know, narrate and point out stuff. I don't know it that well, but it looks like, what else can we see? Coming in here, this should actually make contact right there. Um, we've got a place for our signals to kind of loop through like that. And that'll come into here, kind of some gateway points, presumably for this. So, cool. Uh, yeah, you kind of see how everything fits and works together. We've got some thermal pads here to help the... Uh, Metal horn here actually act as a heat sink for some of these chips here to help cool things down. Very nice. So, 
there we go. We have made it to the inside. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of uh, little pieces here until we got a bunch of screws and whatnot. Whole bunch of different uh, circuit boards. So again, what I'll do is uh, I'll post pictures of all of these boards uh, on RDF. You guys can go take a look. Uh, look at all the pieces individually, front and back. And uh, you know, the video, of course, is really helpful to see how exactly everything fits and works together. Um, cool. So there we go. There's a look at this uh, new Max 360. There's definitely, well, I mean, kind of makes sense, right? We've got our two horns, um, but just cool to see it inside. This is where everything happens. So there you go. Hope these are interesting. Uh, I like doing these. I got more detectors. I'll keep doing them. But uh, in the meantime, I do want to go ahead and put this guy uh, back together. We'll get some photos taken, of course, and then, uh, you know, resume testing, get familiar with the interface, design, uh, features, all that good stuff. So more videos to come, of course, as always. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.